Converting a two-dimensional vector to Cartesian form is pretty straightforward. Just a single cosine and sine, and you're there. But for 3D force vectors, that one extra D adds a lot of extra angles. These can appear as three angles measured to each coordinate axis, or as two angles, one angle within the XY plane, and then a vertical elevation angle up in the Z direction. Now the most common way to present 3D vectors is not gonna be to use angles at all. It's just gonna be with position vectors and unit vectors. Because normally when we build something, we don't always know the angle of a cable. We usually know the XYZ coordinate where each end of that cable will be connected. But that's gonna be a separate video. So if you wanna learn about position vectors, unit vectors, and force directed along a line, which is what you'll do for most of the rest of the course in statics, click on this video up here. But if you do have angles for your three-dimensional vector, this is one way that they can be presented. Alpha, beta, gamma, with the alpha measuring the angle to the x-axis, beta to the y-axis, and gamma to the z-axis. And to convert to Cartesian form, you're just going to project the vector f onto each axis using cosine. Since two of the angles are given, finding the component in the x and y directions, the i and j components, is gonna be simple plug and chug. But without that third angle, gamma, it might seem kind of like you're stuck. So I'm actually gonna first finish the Cartesian vector and go back and solve for angle gamma last because by the definition of the magnitude of a vector, it's equal to the square root of each of its components squared. It's a 3D Pythagorean theorem. So that gets us to a Z component of 40 pounds. And that 40 pounds will also be equal to 80 cosine gamma and use this relationship to solve for gamma. Now for a lot of problems, you won't actually care about the angle gamma. Getting to this Cartesian vector, the IJK form, is usually the part that you're actually gonna need for whatever you're doing. But since this problem statement asked us to also find gamma, that's why I did that extra step in the middle. In this angle, the 30 and 40 degree angles are not coordinate direction angles. The 30 degree angle is gonna be related to gamma. 90 minus gamma will equal that 30 degree angle. But the 40 degree angle is within the XY plane. So in order to turn F1 into Cartesian form, we're gonna first need to project it from 3D space into 2D space in the XY plane. Then we'll be able to use that 40 degree angle with sine and cosine to figure out X and Y components. Although the Z component is gonna be the easiest, so we'll do that one first. First solve for angle gamma, and then the Z component is just gonna be the magnitude of the force times cosine gamma, which is gonna give us 40 pounds. And then K is just the unit vector in the Z direction. The next step is to take the 80 pound diagonal vector and project it down into the XY plane onto this red diagonal line. And you can do that using the 30 degree angle that's given. And I'm calling this vector F1 XY, meaning that it is the projection of vector F1 in the XY plane. And it works out to be 69.28 pounds. You can then get F1 X and F1 Y using the 40 degree angle and the cosine or sine as appropriate. Since the x-axis is adjacent to the 40 degree angle, I use cosine for the x component. And since the negative y-axis is opposite of the 40 degree angle, I'm using sine, but I'm also using a negative value. F1, X, Y is pointing to the left, which is the negative y direction. And so the y component of this force vector will also be negative. And combining the i, j, and k components that were each found individually, this is the Cartesian vector for this 3D force. All right, so let's put it all together and find the resultant force of F1 and F2. That is, we're gonna take both F1 and F2, convert them each into Cartesian form, add the vectors, and I'll present the answer in two different ways. One is the easiest, just leaving it in a Cartesian form. And the second way will be to convert back to a magnitude with coordinate direction angles. Since I provided coordinate direction angles for F1, I can get to Cartesian form just using cosine of each of those three angles. The 45 degree angle is pointing to the positive X axis, 60 degree angle pointing to the positive Y axis, and then I'm subtracting the Z component because the other 60 degree angle is pointing to the negative Z axis. All right, one down, one to go. So I'm gonna save a little bit of calculator work on this one by using the three, four, five triangle. The Z component is the vertical direction that is the three side of the triangle. And the 125 Newtons is the diagonal direction, that's the five. So the vertical component is three fifths of 125. And if you still have trouble with these triangles, it may help to actually draw out the similar triangle. So you can set up a ratio. Three to F1Z is gonna be equal to five over 125, right? That's similar triangles. And when you rearrange this, that lets you solve for the Z component. 
So before I use the 20 degrees, I need to take that 125 and project it downwards onto the XY plane. This is again gonna be done with similar triangles, this time using the horizontal four. So 125 times four fifths gives us this horizontal component. Now since the 20 degrees is adjacent to the positive X axis, I'm using 100 cosine 20. And since the 20 degrees is opposite the negative Y axis, it's negative 100 sine 20 for the Y component. And combining the three terms gives us F2 in Cartesian form. You then find the resultant force of these two vectors by adding the X components together, separately adding the Y components, and separately adding the Z components. And that gives you the final resultant force of adding F1 plus F2 in Cartesian form. And if we want to find the magnitude and coordinate direction angles, we'll find the magnitude first. You find the magnitude by doing a 3D Pythagorean theorem where you just square each of the X, Y, and Z components, the I, J, K terms, and to find each of the three coordinate direction angles, we'll use this new magnitude along with the i, j, k components of the Cartesian vector. And some calculator work with inverse cosine gives these three coordinate direction angles. And the gamma angle is greater than 90 degrees, meaning it's pointing down below the x, y plane into the negative z direction. And looking back at the initial figure to see if this final answer actually does make sense, we got an answer with the highest term in the positive x direction, which makes sense since both F1 and F2 are both pointing in the positive x direction. We got an answer that's positive y, but a small number in the positive y direction, which again makes sense because F1 is larger than F2. So F1 is pulling more in the positive y direction than F2 is pulling negative y. And the final answer being negative in the z direction also makes sense because again, F1 is larger than F2, so the negative z component of F1 is overwhelming the positive z component of F2. And now that you've learned about coordinate direction angles, there's a good chance that you're hardly gonna use this at all for the rest of the course. What you're really gonna be using are position vectors and unit vectors for forces directed along a line. And so if you click on the video linked on the screen now, this is what you'll actually be doing for most of the rest of the course, because usually in 3D space, you know where things are connected, but not necessarily the 3D angles. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.